as you mentioned that it has uh, the land uh, it was a very unique uh, uh, choice people at the beginning were skeptical if it was uh, fit for uh, for uh, wine making or for pinot noir uh, what are your experiences after these years uh, what are the unique uh, terroir effects it's always exciting when uh, when you're right or at least not wrong because it's really a huge bet uh, financially to say hey, this acre of land is going to make uh, great wine, whether that's at our elevation or at uh, higher elevation. You know, it, we're all betting. We're all in farming. There's a lot of uh, a lot of gambling. And so we were absolutely thrilled. Our first crop was in 2020, and uh, we love the wines. Um, the baby vines in Pinot, it was just this cherry on top of cherry on top of cherry. It was just such an, a pure expression of that that bright, elegant uh, Pinot Noir aroma. And I'm not trying to like ride on the Dundee Hills' coattails, but Dundee Hills is one of the more famous AVAs in Oregon. And we're not in the Dundee Hills, but that delicate, uh, delicate cherry, that velvet tannin, that kind of rose petal aromatics, I see a lot of correlations with that. So, and we're actually fairly close, you know, a couple miles down the road. And so that was a big relief where it's like, okay, what I've put my life savings into uh, makes wine that tastes good. So that's always one. And I've been really thrilled with our Chardonnay as well. The first generation of Oregon Chardonnays uh, sometimes were a bit troubled. It was a different climate for sure. We were growing different clones that were really selected for yield down in California. And the first generation of Chardonnays were not well received in Oregon. We're part of kind of a Chardonnay renaissance now where people are treating it as best they can. So they want uh, yield limited clones. They want to uh, clonally blend. We want to um, blend in the field as well. So doing some Selection Maisal things and uh, aging that and fermenting that in new oak and neutral oak to some extent. Um, and so those Chardonnays to me are really exciting. They're, uh, I think in time will rival the best in the world if they don't already. And so that's really fun uh, to me to, to really try to move the, the needle in what Oregon Chardonnay can do. I see, I see. Yeah, uh, in the recent uh, years, uh, the Chardonnay, especially the California Chardonnays had a little bit of a bad reputation with over oaking and uh, and uh, all the very very similar styles all over uh, California but uh, yeah I can see that the uh, renaissance is coming and there are a little bit more more exciting and more uh, focused on the chardonnay and less on the on the oak and the vanilla yeah and I think it, I think it's probably even tougher in chardonnay to be expressive of terroir in a way that pinot it's almost easier to get it to express that site uh, with chardonnay um, I think we've learned as an industry, um, when's a better time to pick it, you know, how you oak it to, to bring out some of that sense of place. I think it's harder in Chardonnay than Pinot, but when you do it, it it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. Thanks for watching this video. You can watch the full podcast episode by clicking here or watch another interesting video by clicking here. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section and see you in the next one.